As some lawmakers push for a lot more transparency and ethics reforms to the Supreme Court, new documents are pulling the curtain back on a really pivotal period for the High Court. The Library of Congress has released a trove of once private papers belonging to the late Justice John Paul Stevens. Our senior Supreme Court analyst, Joan Biskupic, has gone through all of them. She joins us now. And this is so interesting <laughs> because it's so rare and we don't get it for all of the justices. And, and I just want to start out, Joan, with one thing that it showed, how Justice Sandra Day O'Connor really provided the early framework and steered the outcome of the 2000 election. Can you take us sort of behind the scenes? We're talking about Bush versus Gore. Sure, Poppy. You know, frankly, I live for days like yesterday. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, when you just said I'd been through all of them, no, because there are like 700 boxes. But I A will. lot of I will them, be. I should say. I will be. Yes, and it's just so great because... While it's, it's rare that these papers become available, it's not exceedingly rare. The last batch that we had came from justices who served until the early 1990s, uh, Justices Harry Blackman and Thurgood Marshall. And this pivotal period, which includes Bush v. Gore, is from 1994 to the year um, 2004. All these papers are opened up so we can see who influenced whom, what other... Um, uh, justices who might have secretly steered the outcome, how much they might have been looking to outside forces. It's just a real treasure trove to understand how the law of the nation is decided. And in Bush v. Gore that you asked about, you know, that five to four opinion that came down late on the night of December 12, 2000, deciding the election, giving George W. Bush the White House over then Vice President Al Gore was an unsigned opinion. We weren't sure exactly who truly influenced it. And what we see is that the actual writing was done by Anthony Kennedy, but he, he was using a, a framework that was provided by Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, the first woman on the Supreme Court, and a woman who herself was steeped in politics mm -hmm. because she was in Arizona State Legislature. And I love to say that she came to Washington knowing how to count votes, and she truly did. And they worked together, again, to give Bush the White House, but also to rob uh, Chief Justice William Rehnquist of a theory that he was pushing that would have, frankly, really empowered state legislatures at the, the expense of state courts and state constitutions. So we got to see all that, plus some of the tensions behind the scenes. You know, uh, Justice Antonin Scalia, who was in the majority, famously used to tell the public, get over it. And we see some of, we saw yesterday some of what he was writing to his colleagues about how angry he was at dissenters. But even mild mannered uh, Anthony Kennedy was saying, you know, you, you liberal dissenters who are saying that uh, the integrity of the court will be, will be lost, you're just putting forward something that will be a self fulfilling prophecy. It's fascinating, especially when you think of the Stevens dissent in Bush versus Gore, the last line, although we may never know with complete certainty oh, yes. the identity of the winner of this year's presidential election, the identity of the loser is perfectly clear. It is the nation's confidence in the judge as an impartial guardian of the rule of law. That was then, or yeah. 23 years past that now. You know, Poppy, and it was, Bush v. Gore seemed such, so unusual, so unprecedented, and that language that you just read from Justice Stevens seems such a departure from what, how justices would speak at the time. Now, it's almost like an everyday occurrence among outside critics of the Supreme Court, but also among some justices inside. The, you know, the integrity of the Supreme Court, its vaunted impartiality are really being questioned today mm -hmm. in a way that... Uh, back in the year 2000, it was unusual. Yeah. You're yeah. exactly right, Poppy. What a foreshadowing that was. Right? Thanks, it was. Joan. Thanks, Joan. Thank you.